Hello, uh, this is um, the Pharma Life Dev Call, March 21st, 2024. We decided to record a how-to video on this call for um, creating a custom CSV importer template in PharmaOS. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and try to walk through some, some examples here. Uh, so the first thing to note is that PharmaOS does come with a CSV import module. If you go to Setup, Modules, and enable the PharmaOS import CSV, this will provide a couple of default importer modules, uh, or importers, I should say. Um, it will create one for each asset type, each log type, and each taxonomy term type. And those will have a default set of columns, a default template, essentially, for, uh, for each one. So that then appears under the import mod, uh, menu and CSV import. And if I click on that, you can see a whole list of all of them. So this is just a default PharmOS instance that I have running locally with these modules enabled. So we've got the animal importer, equipment, land, plant, et cetera, for assets. For logs, we got activity, harvest, input, et cetera. And for taxonomy terms, we have animal type, crop family, log category, et cetera. So for each one of these, if I open up the animal one, for example, it gives you a place to upload the file, but it also describes what the columns are that it expects and what the what the expected values are for those two. So like name, parents, notes, status, ID tag, et cetera. And you can download a template. Uh, so this will just give you a blank CSV file with all of those columns. So the default columns that are available for assets are different from the ones that are available for logs, for example. Logs have additional information like quantities. They can reference assets. And similarly, for taxonomy terms, um, taxonomy CSVs are pretty simple. They just have name, description, and parent for creating a hierarchy. So these work for most most of the time, 80% of the time, if you just need to get some records in. But sometimes they don't have everything you need, or you might want to do more with it. Um, one example of this might be on a log importer. If we look at <clears throat> the harvest log, for example, notice that it only allows for a single quantity, whereas logs in PharmOS can have multiple quantities on them. So there are some inherent limitations with these default importers. But what we want to demonstrate today is how you can create a custom importer using a farm using a PharmOS module. So to get started with that, what I'm going to do is open up PharmOS.org, and I will go to Development Module, Getting Started, and this is this page will show the basics for creating a new module. Um, it's very simple. The main thing you just need is a uh, info.yaml file. So I'm just going to copy this default or this example one here. And the recommended place, there's a couple of places you can put this within your site. The easiest place that I'm just going to start with today is in Sites All Modules. So that would be in your web root. Um, and I've got my environment here. I've got my www directory, my web directory. Then here is Sites All Modules. And right now that's empty. You'll have to create this directory if it doesn't exist. Then what you're going to do is you're going to create a new module uh, and give it whatever name you want. Um, best practice is to namespace them with farm underscore something, but you don't have to do that. So I will say farm underscore example CSV importer. It's kind of long, but that's OK. Um, now what I'll do is I'll create the info.yaml file, that has to have the exact same name. So farm example CSV importer .info .yaml. And I'll just copy and paste in what I got uh, from, from the example on the um, on farmwest.org. For dependencies, I'm going to set this to uh, farm farm import CSV. And that'll, that'll include all of the necessary dependencies for, for CSV importers in general. Um, so I'll say that this is uh, example CSV import module. Um, this is my example module. And if you leave this in the PharmOS contrib package, then as soon as I save this and go back to my instance and click on modules, 
we should see that appear automatically under uh, community modules here. And there it is, example CSV import. So that info YAML file just tells FarmOS that the module exists. It doesn't actually do anything yet, but it makes it show up in this list. I'm not going to enable it yet because we need to add a few more things. So then back in here, I'm going to go to development module CSV importers, where we have an overview of how this works. So a CSV importer um, can, be, can be created basically with a single YAML file that you'll put in, your, in, a, in another directory within your module directory. And that directory is called um, config slash install. So the config install directory inside of a inside a FarmOS module, which is really just a Drupal module, is where you have all of the configuration YAML that you want to be created when the module gets installed. So note, any, any configuration I put in here, it only gets created when this module is installed, meaning if I go and change this again later, I need to uninstall and reinstall the module for that to take effect. You can also revert it using the, the config update module, um, which maybe I'll get to, but there's other ways you can you can speed up the development process. I just wanted to make note of that for now. So what we need to do in here is create a YAML file, and the naming of the YAML file is important. So in this, we're just going to go with this example that's on here, but then maybe we'll extend it a little bit. The naming needs to be migrate underscore plus dot migration dot egg underscore harvest dot YAML. So I'm going to go in and create a file in that directory called migrate plus migration egg underscore harvest dot YAML. And then I'm going to come back here and I'm just going to copy and paste this example YAML from, from that page. And then I'll explain what all of it is. So a, uh, a migration configuration essentially uses the migrate API module that comes with Drupal uh, to define a mapping um, as well as a source and a destination. So some of the things up here are just basic, uh, basic pieces of configuration. You have to give it an ID. This ID must match the name that you gave the file. So egg underscore harvest must be the same as ID, egg underscore harvest. Uh, the label, you can give it here. Um, for these, you, you have to put them into the farm underscore import underscore CSV migration group in order for them to appear automatically in FarmOS. That's one of the things that our code looks for. And then this is also important is in source, you have to say the plugin is CSV underscore file. These two things combined allow FarmOS to know how to treat this and to sh put it into the into the UI. This area for constants, you this is optional. You can put in things that you use elsewhere in your migration logic. I, I won't go into detail on that yet, but you'll see it in the future. Destination is where you set the plugin for what this should create. So in this case, we're creating an entity of type log. So it must be in this format, entity colon log, surrounded by single quotes. So again, you've got the source saying, where is this coming from? And in our case is CSV file. And the destination, where is this going to? Into logs. So this importer will create logs. Then we, in this process section, we uh, define all of the different mapping that needs to take place between the CSV columns and the fields of the log, the attributes and relationships that are stored on the log itself. So this first bit here, well, here, let me give the let me give a quick overview of how this works. Essentially, you the the first key here is um, the field name. So if your log has a field of timestamp, for example, you would say timestamp. Then under that, you have what's called a process pipeline. And that basically just means it will take whatever it finds from the source and pass it through various plugins to transform it 
into a format that's suitable to be stuck into the timestamp. Um, the simplest uh, plugin that you can do is called the get plugin. And that would just look like this, plugin get source timestamp. So what this means is if I have a column in my CSV called timestamp, I can just pull directly from that column and stick it directly into the timestamp of the log in PharmaOS. The trick there, though, is that this expects a Unix timestamp. So that means that your CSV would also have to have Unix timestamps, which you probably don't want. That's kind of um, inconvenient to deal with. So what you might want instead is to transform that uh, using a different plugin. So for example, down here, you'll see I'm going to delete this. Well, actually, I'm going to come back to that in a second. But down here, you'll see what we're actually doing for the timestamp is we're parsing the log timestamp with the PHP string to time function. So string to time is a um, really flexible PHP function. It claims to parse about any English textual date time description into a Unix timestamp. So you know it works for most things I've found. It, you can throw at it different formats of dates, and it will figure out what timestamp to put it in. So what we do here is we say the plugin is callback. And that just allows you to pass in a PHP function name. So that's really powerful in itself. If you want in your module to add your own transformation functions, you can. And I'll show you how to do that maybe at, at the end of this. But basically, the plugin is callback. The callable is the function name. And source is where is the name of the column in the CSV. So in this CSV, we're going to call it date. Now, one more thing I just want to say about the, these process pipelines, there is a shortcut. If you're just using the get plugin, you don't need to put all this in. You can just say timestamp. And what this implies is that it will use the get plugin to pull from the timestamp column and stick it into the timestamp field. Um, now, for logs and most other records, there is one other thing you need to do, which is just to say what type of log it is, otherwise known as the bundle of the log. So in this one, we're creating a harvest log. And to do that, we say, OK, we're going to fill in the type field of the log. And we're going to use the default value plugin. And the default value will be harvest. So this CSV importer will always create a harvest log. If you wanted to make that configurable, meaning like if you wanted to allow that to be um, defined in the CSV, you could change this to get and say source log type. And then you'd have a log type column on your CSV. And that's what it would map to. Now note, this is going to go through a validation process. So if you put in a bogus type, it's going to, it's going to throw an error. It's not going to work. So you should um, test that. So I'll put that back. So I've covered the first one, type and timestamp. This next bit is a little bit complicated. And I'm not going to get into too much detail. But basically, this is, this is a something you can come and copy and paste to create quantities of different kinds in, uh, in a PharmaOS CSV importer. Um, maybe I'll come back to this in a minute and kind of go into it in a little more detail. But that's what these two pieces are for. And I say there's two pieces because we're, we're doing two things. One is we are um, creating a pseudo value. A pseudo value is one with an underscore here. And we can, we can create those and then use them somewhere else. So for example, in this case, we're creating a pseudo value called underscore unit. And then we're using it down here to populate the units of a quantity that we create. Um, so that can be useful in some cases. The reason we're doing that for units here is because we don't know. Ultimately, what this CSV is going to do is it's just going to ask for a date and a number of eggs. And it's going to create a harvest log saying, we harvested this many eggs on that date. And it's going to give the create a quantity with the number of eggs, um, a count measure, and a unit of eggs. We don't know if that unit term exists in PharmOS or not yet. So that's what this piece does. It uses entity generate plugin to essentially create or load that entity's units term. So if it doesn't exist, it'll create it. 
if it does exist, it'll use that existing term. And then this quantity one, this is how we set the quantity of the log. Um, uh, I won't get into a lot of detail on this one because it's kind of complicated, but this is kind of this is how you would create a quantity. And you can do this. You can you can create multiple quantities using the same thing. Um, but that's maybe best to just copy and paste. This could probably be a separate uh, guide on uh, all the different ways you could create quantities. I'll skip that for now and just continue on. Auto, uh, this will also auto generate the name of the log. So in this case, we're using the concat plugin to concatenate the constants. We've got the log name prefi prefix. Uh, we've got the number of eggs, which is coming from the the source. So this is this is using multiple sources and passing them into the concat. It's using one source directly from a column on the CSV and it's using two constants. So ultimately what this is going to end up with is if we look up at the constants, um, collected is the prefix and eggs is the unit. So if my column, if my CSV has five in the eggs column, this will end up with a log called collected five eggs. Simple enough. And then the delimiter here is just, it puts a space in between each one. Lastly, we uh, we mark the log as done by filling in the status of the log. And we use the default value plugin again and give it a default value of done. Uh, you could also do this in other ways. You could have a, um, a status, or sorry, you could have a, uh, um, you could have a you could have different ways of of setting this. If you wanted to have a yes no field or or something like that, you could do all that. Uh, the then down here, so we've gone through all the process plugins, and we'll go and maybe add some more stuff to this afterwards. But um, migration dependencies, you can skip that and leave it empty. Um, third party settings, this is where we can add some additional information that's required by the farm import CSV module. This helps it to show up in the UI for you. So um, for one thing, we have an access section with permissions. So you can put a list of user permissions that are required to use this importer. So if the user has the create harvest log permission, then this will show up. If they don't, then they won't be able to use it. And then uh, we have this section, which is where you describe what the columns are. And that is what populates, uh, let's see. Well, let, let's just install this module and I'll show you where that ends up. So now I've got in my module, just to review, I've got just an info.yaml file and a .yaml file in my config install directory. And that's all I need. That should just work. So I'm gonna come back here and I'm going to check the box on that module and click install. And OK, so that module is installed, which means we should be able to come to import and CSV import. And there it is, egg harvest importer. Now, if I click on that and then click on CSV columns, we'll see date, date of egg harvest, and eggs, number of eggs harvested. And then I can download a template. So let's uh, let's do this real quick. And oh, I already did that. We'll open up this example, and we'll say uh, 2024 03 21 for the date. Make these a little bit bigger, and we'll say five eggs. So I'll save that, and make sure you're saving it as a CSV, not a different format. Then I'll come here and I'll say recent and I'll import that. And this will tell you what, uh, how, how, whether it worked or didn't. So this says processed one item, one created, zero updated, zero failed, zero ignored. So that means it worked. It created one new log. And if I go down a little bit further, Below each importer, it will show you a history of every record that it has created. 
along with a link to the CSV that created it and the row number that it came from within that, as well as the, the date that it was imported, which is different than the log date itself. So here's my log, collected five eggs. And if I open that up, you'll see, there it is. So now let's, let's experiment a little bit. Let's say I want to add a location field to my CSV importer. I'm going to collapse this tab. What I will do first is I'll come down and add a description to it down here. So I'll say, I, I want to create a new column that's location. And I'll say where the eggs were harvested from. Then up here, what I need to do is add a process plugin for that. So I know that on a log, we have a field called location. And locations are an asset reference field. So we have to use a special plugin for this. Um, this is a plugin that's provided by PharmOS. It's called Asset Lookup. Uh, and it's pretty simple. So my source will be location. And remember, this has to match this down here. So that's what I'll I'll start with here. We'll say um, populate the logs location field. Now, um, if I just leave this alone like this, it will it will be required. Meaning, if I well, actually, it might it might work if I leave it empty. I forget. Let's try it out. Uh, and in order to do this, first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to install the config update. UI module. I'm using Drush to do this. This will just allow me to revert that config quickly, like I described before. So to revert config, go back to the command line and do Drush config revert that ID. Notice it does not have the .yaml at the end of that. So that worked. And now if I come back, I'm going to close this and close that and I'm going to come back here to my importer. I'll reload. And now we should see a new location column is available. So I'm going to open up my template here. And rather than downloading a new one, I'm just going to say, I'm just going to add it here. So I'll say location. And oh, I don't have any locations yet. So let me make one real quick. Just add a land asset. Um, we'll call it field A. And I won't even do anything else. No, we'll just say field A. OK, so now we've got a field. I will say the location is field A. Save. Come back here. Import that again. And there we go. So now this is the new one that was created, I believe. And there it is. It filled in the location as field A. So the nice thing about the um, about this asset lookup is that it will work with multiple values. You can do comma separated, so it, you can have multiple locations uh, and things like that. Um, yeah, so this is a pretty basic overview of how to set up a default importer, where you'll really start to dig into more um, questions. I think is when you when you want to do. Um, stuff with other plugins or you know more complicated things. One resource that I would highly recommend is understanddrupal.com 31 days of Drupal migrations. So this is more gen general than just PharmOS CSV importers. Drupal migrations can be used for database to database migrations, CSV migrations, any kind of source that you're coming from. But the process pipeline is pretty much the same. It works the same way. So in your case, you know, you're, you're just going to be using CSV as a source. But these have a lot of good information about the different process plugins that are available. So this here's an article about you, how to use process plugins generally, um, using constants and pseudo fields, uh, migrating files and images. Um, that's a little bit trickier with CSV. I don't know if I'd recommend jumping into that. Um, dates, addresses. Uh, Here's a whole section on CSV files generally. Um, so this is a this is a good resource. I would also say uh, 
and we, we might have some of this on the, yeah, re, we have a resources section here. Oh yeah, here we go. So the Drupal Migrate API documentation is a great spot to learn about migrations more generally. It will also list all of the core process plugins that Drupal provides. Um, but then there's also uh, process plugins that are provided by another module that we include, which is the Migrate Plus module. So things like um, callback that I showed before, concat I showed before, default value, um, explode, extract, flatten, get, um, et cetera, et cetera. These are all the different plugins that Drupal Core provides. And then there's a whole bunch that this uh, additional Migrate Plus module provides, which comes with PharmaOS as well. So these are also available. And yeah, so I think that's probably the quickest overview I can give of uh, creating a custom CSV importer in PharmaOS. And yeah, if you're if you're interested in working on that, or you have other questions that come up or challenges that you face when you're when you're working on that, um, best place to go is the PharmaOS forum, which is pharmaos.discourse.org. Feel free to ask questions, and we can point you in the right right direction. All right, thanks a lot.